Welcome again. In this chapter, I will try to introduce you to a tool which I'm sure you have heard quite a lot about in recent years. This is Health Technology Assessment, commonly, commonly abbreviated as HTA. HTA is almost everywhere on policy agendas in Central and Eastern Europe. Some countries, such as Poland, Czech Republic and Hungary have already had HTA systems for several years. Other countries have either elements of HTA or they are currently considering the implementation of their systems. So what is this famous HTA about? Let's have a broad and not too technical definition. In this approach, health technology assessment is a multidisciplinary activity for the evaluation of new health technologies. It covers methods for the systematic evaluation of the comparative value of medicines and other health technologies. So it's a clinical and economic activity and it is closely uh, linked to pricing and reimbursement decisions for new technologies. These decisions may be taken by public and private payers and it is also important to know that these decisions are not only for um, listing decisions, so when the technology appears on the market, but also afterwards. I hope it makes a bit more sense now. Sometimes people think that HTA is decision making itself. This is not quite true. Health economic analysis and health technology assessment are an important input to healthcare decisions, but these decisions are based on a broader range of factors and considerations. Such considerations include social, ethical, political and other aspects. Other aspects, in turn, may be manifold. For example, decision makers may, of, may consider research and development incentives, industrial policy or workplaces. Now, let's imagine that you are a decision maker in healthcare. Why? Because healthcare systems or HTA systems are normally designed for decision makers to support their decisions. So, to understand their way of thinking, let's assume for a second that you are a decision maker and you want to arrive at a well-functioning HTA system. Generally, there are four decisions about your future system that you will need to take. First, you will need to decide which HTA approach you are going to use. You have several choices. For the sake of ease and understanding, I'm showing you only three here. The first option is called economic evaluation. When using this approach, you try to quantify as much as you can. You try to think about technologies and the benefit that they bring in economic terms. You are focused on budget impact and cost effectiveness. The second approach is comparative assessment. In this approach, you try to think about the clinical benefit of a technology and you try to compare it to other available technologies. Thus, the clinical benefit becomes added or relative clinical benefit. And in this approach, you don't necessarily want to quantify this benefit. Rather, you want to describe it in mostly clinical terms. And finally, there is the third approach, balanced or multi-criteria assessment. This is not considered by everyone as an approach on its own, as it's essentially the combination of the previous two. There are several types of multi-criteria assessment systems. Once you have decided about the approach, you have an almost equally important thing to do. You need to decide which perspective you take. Most countries normally use a payer perspective. This means that the health technology is assessed exclusively from the payer's viewpoint. A special case is the budget holder's perspective. In this, only that healthcare budget is considered relevant, which the health technology is targeting for funding or already receives funding from. For medicines, it's, it's likely to be the pharma budget. For diagnostics, it may be the diagnostic or outpatient budget, and so on. The budget holder's perspective is essentially never chosen in HTA system design, but it is often used in actual practice, quite unfortunately. The third option is the societal perspective. This means that the health technology assess is assessed both from the payer's and the society's viewpoint. In this case, indirect costs and benefits become more visible. For example, those which affect families or social institutions. Remember, you have two more decisions to take, but luckily these are easier to explain. 
you need to decide about the timing of HTE assessment. One option is that you want to evaluate only new technologies when the first pricing and funding decisions are to be taken. Alternatively, you can use HTA for formulary reviews too. This essentially means the reassessment of already funded technologies. And finally, you need to decide about the scope of HTA implementation. In the first step, most countries apply HTA to innovative medicines only, because clinical evidence is available from clinical studies, the product itself is highly standardized, and ownership, is clearly, uh, ownership clearly belongs to the market authorization holder. But there is also the option of assessing all proprietary health technologies, including diagnostics and medical devices, for example. And the broadest and rather theoretic option is to extend HTA to all types of healthcare institutions uh, or interventions. So, to wrap up, when you design an HTA system, you decide about the approach, the perspective, the timing of assessments and the scope. And now let's see what you can hope your brand new HTA system will do for you. Well, quite a lot, honestly. Although HTA systems vary considerably across countries, in most cases they offer the potential for significant improvement in terms of efficiency, transparency and accountability in healthcare decisions. In healthcare systems before HTA, there is quite a risk of non-transparent or arbitrary decisions, low efficiency, limited accountability of decision makers and weak or non-existent deadlines. In such systems, the introduction of HTA offers a chance to increase efficiency through better decisions. It is also important that uh, HTA can help link decisions to objective or at least explicit criteria and to clear deadlines. It can also lead to well-defined responsibilities and thus increased transparency. Now, if HTA is so powerful, you may ask why it comes, to, uh, comes up pretty often in a negative or critical context. To understand this, you must be aware of some important failures linked to HTA and you must know how to avoid these failures. Some HTA systems in the world have, are known to have been associated with some dysfunctions. Some systems are so complicated or so technical that they provide excessive or irrelevant information to decision makers. HD also faces the risk of being pseudo-objective. This means that the models and simulations it uses look good, but as they are built on poor data, their robustness is weak and their results are therefore also not reliable. HTA has also been seen to prolong decision processes unnecessarily and to reinforce a fiscal mindset in decision making in healthcare. What can be done to avoid these traps? Well, three basic rules must be respected. First, HTA systems must serve clearly defined policy goals. Second, they should be designed in a way which takes into account available resources and competences. Third, a good, a good framework is never enough. There should also be proper implementation. To recap, health technology assessment is a multidisciplinary activity for the evaluation of new health technologies. It offers the chance of reaching or increasing transparency, efficiency in and accountability in the healthcare system. There are many ways to establish HTA systems and there are also risks associated with HTA, but these risks can be mitigated through appropriate design and implementation. Thank you very much for your attention.